Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. On this channel recently, I've spent a lot of time talking about something called EULA roofing, end user license agreement roofing. So a EULA is that thing that you read before you install Windows or before you use a website, maybe like a streaming service that tells you the terms and conditions of utilizing their service. And roofing is something that rapists do where they will put a drug in your drink to get you to consent to something that you otherwise wouldn't consent to and say it is okay because, well, you drank the drink and you said yes, so you must have consented to it. This is something I go over on this channel on a regular basis. For instance, Sony would call the transaction that you had with them a purchase. It would say that on the page of their website where you were spending money. However, if you go to page 21 of the legal agreement, they sell you that content provided is licensed on a non-exclusive and revocable basis for your personal, private, non-transferable, non-commercial, limited use, and blah de blah blah which means they can literally take away whatever was purchased. Obviously, like most people that wouldn't consent to sex 30 seconds after meeting you, uh, most people that are purchasing something may not consent to the purchase if you could just take the purchase back at any time. So like a standard rapist, rather than being upfront about their intentions, uh, they put a roofie in the drink, or in this case, what they do is they hide this shit on page 21, which in my opinion is a rapist mentality behavior. I don't like it, and I try to call it out as much as humanly possible. Fundamentally, at its core, what healthy people will do is they will ask for what they want up front, they will make sure that you understand what they're asking for, and they will give you an opportunity to say yes or no. That is what healthy people do. What rapists do is they do everything in their power to make it more difficult for you to say no, so that they could say that you technically said yes, even though the circumstances were such that you would not if you knew everything that was going on. Hiding something in legalese in a EULA on page 21, in my opinion, is akin to somebody hiding a roofie in your drink. It takes the same mentality for somebody to do that. And it's something that I've discussed in this channel on a regular basis. And it's something that I've discussed with Roku as well. And that's what we're going to be going over today. Roku decided to ransom people's televisions by forcing them to agree to a forced arbitration agreement. These types of forced arbitration agreements essentially take away your rights as an American to go to court to settle disputes with companies that have screwed you over. And Roku decided to push out a forced arbitration agreement to people who had already purchased the product. To be clear, not new products. To people who had already purchased the product, because you have a device that connects to the internet, as I say very often on this channel, they are able to change the terms of the sale and they are able to change the product after you have purchased it. So many people got a message on their television like this. We've made an important update. We've updated our dispute resolution terms. Select agree to agree to these updated terms and to continue enjoying our products and services. Notice, like a typical rapist, there is no option to disagree. There is no option to say no, because modern Silicon Valley companies don't believe that you have the right to say no. Say yes, agree, or F you. You don't even have the option to hit I disagree and have the television not work. It's agree or no HDMI input switching for you. No using any of the apps in the television for you, which is something that I find to be disgusting. You cannot force people into these types of agreements after they have already purchased a product. Set the terms at the time that the person purchased the product and F off if you want to change it afterwards. And it seems like we have some insight into why it is they decided to do this. Roku is saying that many people had their accounts hacked, people logged into the accounts, and they may have used their accounts to you know, purchase things using the credit card of the, uh, of the account holder that they did not consent to. Now, Roku doesn't really take any accountability or responsibility here. They are claiming that all of this information came from other websites. So, you know, somebody reused their password of QWERT1234 on every website that they logged into, or they just used the word password, or the username was username and their password was... You get the idea. Something like that. Essentially, blaming the users for their problem. And you can see over here that people are, are, are sharing screenshots on Telegram channels where scammers uh, scam with, uh, you know, essentially bragging about the stuff that they were ordering with these hacked accounts that apparently were getting sold for 50 cents. Companies don't typically risk pissing off their users by sending out an agreement to their device that literally disables it unless you uh, forfeit your rights, unless they believe that they have screwed up in a serious, serious manner. And here I imagine somebody at Roku thinks, wow, we probably have some liability here. We've probably screwed up in a serious, serious manner. And as a result of that, and not wanting to take accountability and responsibility in any way, shape, or form, they decided to try to roofie all of their customers. Uh, just imagine. Imagine that I figure out, because here's the thing. I always try to make analogies to my business here. Imagine that I figure out that I got a batch of bad parts, and that these parts have been failing like after six to nine months in a lot of my customers' devices in a way that winds up destroying the device. Can you imagine if I had the ability to have a pop-up show up on that customer's MacBook that says you must hit agree to a binding arbitration or forced arbitration agreement in order to continue using your MacBook. And it had an agree button and no disagree button. And if you didn't hit agree, you couldn't use the device anymore. Like, could I get away with that? Could you get away with that? 
Would there not be a punishment for doing that shit? There'd be a punishment for you or I. My store would get firebombed if I tried to do that. I would have tens of thousands of one-star reviews, the Department of Consumer Affairs, and the Attorney General on my ass before I, I wake up tomorrow morning. Is, is that what's going to happen to Roku? Is that what happens to LG when they decide to put a notice on the box that you only see when your television is delivered and may not even see at that point because their delivery people go out of their way to throw away the box before you even see it because it doesn't fit in your door? Uh, like, is, is this what's going to happen to these companies? Do you believe that these companies are going to be treated the same way that you or I would be treated if we try to change the terms after the sale and hold a customer's device hostage after they already paid for it? No, no. It, it, Roku is claiming here, and I think it is very important for factual purposes to say, after the publication of our article, Roku disputed what we were told, stating that the new dispute resolution terms are not related to the hacked account and fraudulent activities. Who watching this believes that? How fucking stupid does Roku have to believe that you are? That they would actually risk legal action, severe harm to their reputation and brand by holding hundreds of thousands of people's devices hostage after they purchased it? You know, just because they felt like it. Coincidence has nothing to do with the fact that 15,000 accounts got hacked and many of them were making fraudulent charges to customer credit cards that, that you didn't notice. Do you believe that? Really? Because here's the thing. They're claiming in the document over here, there's an attached PDF that goes over everything that Roku is saying. They, they say, they claim that this has absolutely nothing to do with Roku security, that all of this stuff has to do with, uh, with you know, third party services. And here's the problem. I might be open to believing you if you were not blatantly lying. When you say that this update that you pushed out to everybody, that essentially, again, this is the type of thing that ruins business reputations, that could actually get you sued. Real action from the Attorney General or the FTC, if the FTC had any teeth or balls in 2024, uh, that you really expect us to believe that that's a coincidence. Because when you say that, in my opinion, you're just a lying sack of shit, and there's no reason to believe anything else that you have to tell us. Do you believe that? Would you purchase a Roku product? Would you purchase a television that connects to the internet? I am never purchasing a monitor, a television, anything like that that connects to the internet. The only thing that I want connecting to the internet in my house is a PFSense router and a Linux computer. That is it. Anything that I plug into my television is going to be from there. I am not connecting it to the internet. I'm not dealing with televisions that have me opt out rather than opt in to selling my data when they cost me over $3,500 like the LG G3 OLED flagship TV. Nor am I trusting you because you've demonstrated time and time again that I shouldn't. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.